Well, good evening. The elders and the staff, thank you for joining us for this brief time of prayer. Uh, we'll have some folks leading us tonight, and, um, and they'll be praying their heart and their heart's concerns. And we would ask that you'd please do likewise. As you think of a friend or a neighbor in need of prayer, pray for them right where you are. And when we finish in about a half an hour, well, you can, if you would like, go ahead and keep right on praying. Some of you will be taking this opportunity to conclude a, a fast that you may have begun. Some of you will be use, using this evening as a start to your fast. In whatever the case, God is interested in what's in your heart. May God bless you as you seek him. And now I'm going to ask Pastor Billy to lead us. And he'll be followed by Jane Kelly, Ken Herbold, Rachel Diller, and finally me. Would you please join us? Pastor Billy, could you come get us started, please? The privilege of prayer is certainly one of God's greatest blessings to his people. He has said that his house is to be a house of prayer. And his word is filled with promises attached to prayer that invite us to come boldly before his throne of grace. In the book of Psalms 145, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. That is our hope, that we come to him in the one whose name is truth, even Jesus Christ, to plead our case before God that he might hear us and save us. Our Lord Jesus told us that if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? We have Jesus' own word that his Father's disposition is one of grace and kindness and generosity toward us. Second Chronicles 20 has always been one of my favorite passages. The enemies of the Israelites are coming against them to attack them. This is the way we read. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, and with them some of the Meunites, came against Jehoshaphat for battle. And some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom. Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. They came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. We are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That expresses the attitude of our hearts tonight. We feel the temptations and the difficulties of these days, and we need to come together and put our eyes where they ought to be, upon the God who loves us, and has redeemed us in Jesus Christ, and has invited us, indeed commanded us, to seek his face in prayer. Join me, please. Father in heaven, we do bow in your presence in the mighty name of Jesus to look to you, to call upon you, to humble ourselves before you, to be still and know that you are God. We rejoice in the promises that you have made to us, that you hear and answer prayer. We rejoice in the peace that passes understanding that guards our hearts and minds as we bring our petitions to you to lift up those petitions to you in prayer with thanksgiving. Father, we would ask that you would be present with us in this hour of prayer, that you would grant us grace to pray boldly and yet humbly, that we would confess our sins and that we would claim your promises, that we would express our dependence upon you and be willing to be used of you as instruments of your righteousness in this difficult time. Father, we pray for those who lead us. We pray for those who serve us. We pray for the medical community and the first responders and the, the Coast Guard and all those who are giving their hearts and lives for us. 
We pray, Lord, that you would be pleased to work in a mighty way in our country. And indeed, beyond our country to the world, this is a global condition. And we pray, Father, that you would extend your arm, that your kingdom might come on earth as it is in heaven, that your will might be done and that your church might be extended. Father, glorify your name. Meet us in this time of worship. Assure us of your blessing. Grant us grace to express our need and to claim your grace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear Father, God, I just thank you, Lord, for the privilege of bringing all of these concerns to you, Lord, that we can take them from our hearts and minds and put them into your hands at this time. And Lord, I pray for I pray, Lord, for a lot of separate, small issues, Lord. So many factors affect this coronavirus situation, Lord. And I pray, Lord, first of all, for the development of medicines and vaccines, Lord. I just pray that you would speed along the development of all those scientists that are working on developing the medicines new things, Lord, that we haven't seen before. I pray, Lord, that the government would remove regulations, Lord, that might slow down or prevent the development of this. And Lord, I pray for the cooperation amongst all the scientists, the universities, learning centers, Lord, companies, corporations, research and development departments, Lord, that are developing these things, Lord, that they all might work in unity, Lord, to defeat this coronavirus, Lord so that people are not sick and don't even have to go to the hospital, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you would uh, just facilitate this, Lord, in every single factor, every single way. Speed it along, Lord. And I just pray that there would be coverage, Lord, amongst the whole country, Lord, that it would be distributed fairly and um, with justice, Lord, amongst large populations and small populations in rural areas, Lord. Um, Lord, we need your help here, supernatural help to do this, Lord, and I thank you in advance for what you're going to do there. Lord, I pray most of all, Lord, for the health care workers on the front lines, Lord. They are truly soldiers in a battle, Lord, and they are giving their lives. And Lord, as more and more of them come down to the coronavirus, Lord, it's really time to ask you to put a hedge of protection around them, Lord, that you would supernaturally protect these health care workers, the doctors, the nurses, the orderlies, everyone in the hospital situation, Lord, that you would just be with them, Lord, physically strengthen them and gird them up with their strong minds, Lord, that they might think clearly for each and every patient that crossed their paths. I pray, Lord, that you would keep their hearts tender and loving and kind, Lord, that um, you would make peace out of the chaos in hospital rooms, Lord, and emergency rooms, Lord, that your spirit of peace and calmness would reign in every single emergency room, Lord. And Lord, many of these health workers may not be your children yet. They might not be saved. We pray for their salvation. We pray, Lord, that those health workers would see you working in, the, in those emergency rooms, so they would see evidence of you, Lord, and that many would be converted to you, Lord Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that as families cannot see their loved ones on their deathbeds, that you would allow these health workers to be kind, loving proxies for their families, Lord, that no one would die alone and by themselves, Lord, but those health workers would be there to hold their hand, to let them know that they're not alone as they die, Lord, and um, just be in charge of each and every single hospital bed that holds someone that might be at death's doorstep, Lord. We pray, Lord, that when your appearance, your presence, your joy, your peace, your, your comfort, Lord, is evidence all throughout this the hospitals, Lord, that you would get the glory for this, Lord, that people would know that this is not man-made, but that this is a God-made, um, God-produced, that you have facilitated it, you have intervened, Lord, and this is supernatural. This is not from man. And Lord, we just thank you for, in advance, Lord, for what you're going to do with the medical situation, Lord, 
with the healthcare workers, and we just commit those that we know personally that are doing this, Lord, help us to know how to help them and to bless them in practical ways. Even though we can't touch each other, Lord, we just ask that you would help us to know how to work together and um, all just be uh, united, Lord, at this terrible time in, in this coronavirus quarantine, Lord. And thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do. Amen. As we come together to pray, let us remember that there is no burden too heavy for God to lift or for this country to bear with his help. As we read God's promise in Luke 1, verse 37, nothing is impossible with God. We know the COVID-19 outbreak did not surprise him, for God is sovereign even over this. How comforting it is to read in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Gracious and merciful Father God, we come to you with grateful hearts, knowing that you hear our prayers and that you will heal our land. Father, we pray for the millions of workers who were employed just a couple of weeks ago and are now unemployed. The number of businesses, small and large, that are dealing with difficult decisions, including survival. Families dealing with children at home instead of school, leading to homeschooling. So many, many changes and new challenges in our lives brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. Father, we lift up to you the many who have lost their jobs, people who are concerned about getting the virus, their finances, and how they will care for their family, whether they will have a job when we are back to normal, and many other concerns, all of which you are aware. But we are grateful for the technology we have that enables us to communicate and transact some business that otherwise would not be possible or at best extremely difficult. Father, we thank you that you hear our voice, but we pray that we would hear your voice as we navigate this very uncertain and difficult time. Father, may each of, <clears throat> each of us strengthen spiritually, physically, and emotionally, as well as encouragement to deal with the abrupt changes in our lives. Help us to overcome fear, anxiety, and confusion. May the Holy Spirit touch the hearts and minds of many of us, giving us your peace and either reinforcing our faith in you or igniting the desire to seek you in our life, not just for the moment, but for the remainder of our lives. Father, we lift up to you our government officials, federal, state, and local. We acknowledge that you have allowed each one of them to be in a place of influence at this time. May you bless and inspire them in their effort to protect the health and well-being of the people in our nation. May they find solutions to the challenges we face with COVID-19, particularly in handling the financial burden this has placed on so many in our great country. May they mobilize resources quickly and effectively to where they are most needed. And may there be a spirit of bipartisanship at all levels of government as lawmakers work to win this battle. Father, you have blessed us as a nation with so many talented and gifted men and women in industry, science, technology, finance, and agriculture. You have given our country great natural resources, and we acknowledge that all of this comes from you. Father, as we join together in fighting this pandemic, may you use the vision, the leadership, the creativity, the organizational skills, the strategic skills of these great men and women to help all of us in getting back to a healthy economy with low employment while minimizing 
the loss of life. Father, may your people know the peace that only you can give. And may thy will be done in all things. And may you be ultimately glorified. Father, help each of us to do our part as we unite in eliminating this invisible enemy. And Father, as you instruct us in your word, help us each day to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and to love our neighbor as ourself. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our great Lord and Savior. Amen. Holy Father, creator of heaven and earth, we thank you that you hear us. In Isaiah 65, 24, it says, It shall come to pass that before they ask, I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. So, Father, I thank you that you have actually gone before us and you have actually answered all of these prayers. And yet, Father, you love us so much that you are still listening to us. You are not an apathetic, uninterested God. And I thank you for that. Dear Father, this COVID-19 was a surprise to us, but as Ken has expressed, it was not a surprise to you. And dear Father, we thank you that this little congregation, Bay Presbyterian Church, that we have not yet seen the effects within our own congregation personally. But Father, I do know that there are grandchildren, that there are children of the people that are here that are experiencing symptoms, Father, and they are waiting for tests. They are waiting for results, Lord. I pray, Lord, that for those who are waiting tests, I pray, Lord, that you would provide them with those tests, those prescriptions that they need. Dear Father, I also pray, Lord, for those who are waiting for reports, Father, that those reports would come back with accuracy. And, dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you would give them grace as they wait. We know that they are fearful. And, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would comfort them, that you would give them confidence in who you are. Dear Father, we also grieve for the world as a whole. Italy, just recently on Saturday, had over 900 deaths. And, Father, our own country has lost 460. 4,633 people. Dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you would be with those families, Lord, who could not be there with their loved ones, who could not hold their hand. Lord, they have lost such important people. And Lord, I know that many of them are angry, are confused. And dear Father, I just pray that you would give them grace. I pray, Lord, that as they are angry with you, Lord, that you would reveal your compassion, that you would reveal your care and your love. And, dear Father, I just pray that there would be people who would be able to reach out to them, who can love them, who can support them and encourage them. And I pray, Lord, that you would draw their hearts and their minds to you. I pray, Lord, for those who do not know you as their Savior, Father, that somehow, some way, you would lead them to yourself. Dear Father, you also know that there are those who are still fighting for their life. Lord, we have 362 alone who are fighting the virus in Lee and Collier County with 60 that are in the hospital. Dear Father, they are frightened, and so are their families. Lord, we don't know who they are, but you do, and you know them intimately. You know their sleeplessness. You know every cough and every breath that they take. Psalm 139 says that you know that when we sit and when we stand, that you even know our thoughts from afar because you are our creator. And, Lord, you created each and every single one of these person, people in their mother's womb. You fashioned them yourself. And your word even further reminds us that not only did COVID-19 not take you by surprise, that you ordained every single one of their days before they ever came to be. And despite this knowledge, again, Lord, your word says that you think about them with constancy and that you are present with them. 
Father, I pray that you would be with those um, believing nurses and doctors. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help them to be able to communicate your love and your faithfulness to these people who are in their hospital rooms and who are concerned that they may not make it. And I pray, Lord, that they would hear your voice through these people. And I pray, Lord, that they would come to know you as their Savior. We do pray for healing for them, Lord. But we also know that there will be those, Lord, who will lose their lives. And we pray, Lord, that before they go, Father, that they would find you as their Savior. And, Lord, we pray for those who do know you as their Savior, Father, who are sick and who are in the hospital. We pray, Lord, that you would give them courage. We pray, Lord, that they would know your presence, that they would know your love and your care, and that their confidence would be in you. And I pray, Lord, for those who do know you as their Savior, Father, who will not make it through. I pray, Lord, that you would give them peace, that you would give them grace. And I pray, Lord, that you would usher them into your kingdom. And, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would be with those families who are left behind. And I pray, Lord, that they would trust you, that they would be able to say, Thy will be done. But again, Lord, even believers, there are times that we are angry. And I pray, Lord, that you would show them compassion, that you would show them love and care, that you would give them the grace to be able to grieve through these things. Dear Father, although we do not have any coronavirus victims within our own community, we do have many other health concerns. Father, we think about George and Carol Brown. Father, although he lacks coherency, George, because he's in hospice, I pray, Lord, that he would know your presence. I pray, Lord, that he would know your love and your care. I pray, Lord, that you would be with Carol as she struggles with a a broken rotator cuff, Lord, as well as shingles. I pray, Lord, that you would minister to her and that you would give her relief from these symptoms. I also pray, Lord, that you would give her wisdom to know how to love George through to the end. Dear Father, I also pray for Lori Rufus. Lord, we thank you for the good work that you have done in her life. Lord, we thought we were going to lose her, but Lord, you have um, given her the healing that she needs. And I just pray, Lord, that you would strengthen her body. Dear Father, we also think of Bruce Bell, Beverly Cook, Bob DeNoyer, and Rex Sims, Lord, who are all fighting cancer. Dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help their bodies react well to the treatments. I pray, Lord, that you would protect them from COVID-19, that you would give them peace and help their confidence to fully be in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that when there are doubts, Lord, that you would remind them of who you are and of your goodness. And I pray, Lord, that you would give them the faith and trust to get through these days. I pray, Lord, that they would turn their eyes to you. Father, we also pray for Judy Katz. We don't know whether she has cancer or not, and she is waiting, and she is concerned. Father, we also pray for her, that she would turn her heart and her mind to you, that she would draw strength from you. And Father, I pray, Lord, that you would minister to her, that you would guard her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus, Father. Dear Father, we thank you for Joanne Copperman. You know that one of her lungs is not well, and that is a concern for us. Dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you would protect her from COVID-19. I pray, Lord, that you would put a hedge of protection around her. And I also pray that you would help her to be wise, And I pray that you would uh, provide everything that she needs. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless her. Dear Father, we think of Sharon and Fred Klopp. Dear Father, he just received a new heart valve. I thank you, Lord, for the successful surgery. And I just ask, Lord, that you would protect him from infection and from the COVID-19. Dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you would put a hedge of protection around both of them, Sharon and Fred. And I pray, Lord, that you would provide for all of their needs. Dear Father, I also think of Alice Miller. Dear Father, I pray, Lord, that she would know your presence and your comfort in her life as she struggles with illness herself. Dear Father, I also pray that you would protect her caregivers from COVID-19 and that you would provide for all of the needs that they have. Dear Father, I also thank you for this opportunity for both Alice and Ray to be a witness and a testimony to their caregivers and to those who are around them. Dear Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in our church I pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in this situation. And I pray, Lord, that we in this church would be bright and shining lights for your kingdom. Dear Father, I pray, Lord, that you would give us confidence instead of fear. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to remember your words from Joshua 1.9. Have not I commanded you. Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you 
wherever you go. Thank you, Father. I want to thank all those who have led us in prayer so far. And, um, and I would point out that in, in, throughout the Old Testament, the temple was the place where the people of God would, would meet with Almighty God. And you'll recall, starting with the tabernacle, how God would descend on the tent of meeting. And then that, uh, that was built into a building. Solomon would uh, build the temple and I'm reminded of, uh, of the passage many of you are familiar with in, in Second Chronicles, this one in chapter 7. Billy was in Second Chronicles 20. This is Second Chronicles 7. This is when the temple was finished and it was being dedicated. It says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now my eyes, uh, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. I would just uh, remind you of what it says here, that when plague um, and locusts would come, this is our plague. Uh, I think there's a little doubt about that. And then the temple was destroyed. And the Israelites were taken captive. And after a while, they were allowed to return to their land. And they did, and they rebuilt the temple. And when they rebuilt the temple, this is a prayer that Nehemiah prayed. He said, Blessed be your glorious name, and may it be exalted above all blessing and praise. You alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all the starry host the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. You are the Lord God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and named him Abram. You found his heart faithful to you, and you made a covenant with him to give to his descendants the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Gergeshites, you have kept your promise because you are righteous. Well, the temple was destroyed again. It's not been rebuilt. But the temple became flesh and dwelt among us because it is our Lord Jesus Christ where we meet Almighty God. Israel is always treated national catastrophe as a time to reset. Our nation, the United States of America, has used uh, national catastrophes as an opportunity to reset. Let us reset our hearts collectively and individually through repentance to gaze upon our Creator confessing our individual sin, our national sin, and pray that God might send revival to our land. Would you pray with me? A great God and Heavenly Father, thank you that you are here with us now, not just in this room, but you are among the good people of Bay Presbyterian Church as we pray together tonight. And God, for those who will be tuning in during the course of the weeks and months to come, God, we pray that they, that they might share their hearts with you and as we share our hearts with you tonight, that they would be sharing their hearts with us as well. God, we pray uh, as your people, we pray for forgiveness 
for uh, the, the multitudinous times when we have gone astray, when we have uh, collectively as a nation turned from you. God, we've kicked you out of the public schools. We've kicked you out of the city square. We have uh, asked you to leave from our textbooks. God, we ask for forgiveness and pray that you might give us the gift of repentance as a nation. And then, God, individually, we pray uh, for uh, the gift of repentance. We confess to you that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed uh, daily. And, God, we need your forgiveness. We need a refreshing that comes from you and you alone. God, won't you grant us the repentance to the deepest part of our souls uh, that we may reset and recommit our hearts and our lives to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ might be seen in us, Christ, the hope of glory. God, may that hope spread throughout our land from sea to shining sea, and may Christ be glorified in us individually and in this nation through our repentance. Hear us, O oh God, this evening, each and every one. As we make our prayer tonight, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is indeed our strong Savior, amen. We thank you all for joining us tonight, and we pray that this was a blessing to you, and we, we would encourage you to continue those prayers, prayers of intercession, prayers of praise, prayers of thanksgiving, and prayers of repentance. May God bless you and keep you safe. Good night.